Mom, this one's for you. As I waited my turn to call home, I prepared myself for her disappointment. While she would be happy that I was alive and she would be disappointed that I was in prison once again. She knew that prison was a safer than the streets, but that did not mean that she was any happier. Mom always felt a sense of relief when I was locked up because she knew I was clean and getting healthy again. She always felt like she did something wrong in raising me and that she had not done enough. She didn't understand addiction or that none of it was her fault. It was all my fault. I was the only one to blame for all the choices I had made over the years. Calling home was excruciatingly hard. It was almost crippling. I stood there with my head against the payphone for what seemed like hours before I pushed the first button and made the call. My older sister, Tina, answered and accepted the collect call. Ricky, is that you? Tina said. Yes, it's me, I said. She was quiet for a while, and the silence told me something was wrong. I knew she was crying. I told her not to worry and assumed her tears were concern of concern was for me. My self-centeredness made me think the silence was about me, but I could not have been more wrong. Ricky, mom is dying of cancer. And I, no, it can't be, I said. The guilt and shame hit me heavy, my overwhelming with emotion and tears. Mom been sick for a long time and we had no way to tell you, she said. We had no idea where you were, how to contact you, or if you were dead or alive. I cried heavily into the phone and I told my sister Tina to, to give mom a kiss and a hug and tell her that I loved her. When I hung up, I just couldn't talk about it. I didn't want to accept it, what my sister had just told me. I was in denial. I went back to the track and retreated under a long, my long curly hair so that I could cry in private. I needed to process what I'd just heard. Suddenly everything was different. I walked the track, then ran back to my cell where I stayed curled up under my blanket for the next two days while trying to process everything. I was emotionally overwhelmed. I didn't join the others for meals or yard time, remained in my box of pain for the next two weeks. I only left the cell to make, <clears throat> to eat and call and make calls to mom once each day, night. Mom was so sick she could not even speak. When I called, my sister Tina had to hold the phone up to her ear so she could hear my voice. I simply told mom how much I loved her and what <clears throat> I would make, I would, that I would make her proud. I told her that she did not need to feel guilty anymore and that none of this was her fault. I explained that I was to blame for all my bad choices. I promised her that I was going to find a more positive way to live. I told her that I was going to get the help I needed to get my life under control and that I was done with the drugs and that lifestyle. I, res I reassured her that I was, it was the last time I would be locked up and that I was truly, truly done. One night I called and it was only Tina on the other end. I knew right then what had happened, that my mom had passed. My heart sunk with the deepest sadness that I had ever felt. I couldn't speak. I only cried. I wasn't sure what to do next. What I did not know is that I had to keep my promise to my mom and I had to do whatever it took to completely change my life from this day forward. This is for my mom. And this is to reach out and help other people that are struggling in addiction and struggling to find their way. And I couldn't be more excited to get, the, get this out into the world because we wrote it in a way that it would reach, reach a broad audience. It's not just about addiction. It's about fighting through the struggle and finding a solution and finding a way to success. Love you, Mom.